Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to tonight's presentation on Horseheads 2030, continuing our build, a capital referendum in the Horsehead Central School District that will be proposed by the Board of Education on December 7th from 7 a.m. in the morning until 9 p.m. at the evening. For all community residents, whether you are a renter or a homeowner, uh, if you've resided in the district for 30 days or more and are 18 years of age or older and eligible to vote in New York State under any circumstance, you can come out and vote on that day in our high school South Gym. Tonight's presentation is our last public presentation before we go to a public hearing on November 30th at, I believe, 6 o'clock here in the auditorium. Uh, and that will be with the full board and taking any answer and answering any public questions or comments before we head into our vote on December 7th. So we want to thank everybody for coming out for the tour as well. This video will be also available on our website, like all information in regards to this project has been from the inception from the board about four to five months ago up until now, and all the board meetings are available for the public to view. So we've tried to be as transparent and open as we have at the initial onset of our first capital project, Horseheads 2030, Building Our Future Now, that took place in October 2017 and had 82% of the community votes when, with one of the largest vote totals pass that budget at this time. This is the second of three major projects that were proposed back in 2017 to continue the build. So tonight we're uh, able to have our architect as well as our fiscal advisors here give details and descriptions of the potential proposed project, as well as the financial pieces. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you Mr. Chad Snowbird from HUD. Engineers, architects, and surveyors, also a local company here based in Horsehead. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, everybody. Um, so we're going to go through kind of what the process has been, how we got to where we are today. And as Tom mentioned, we've got this is the second major referendum in what was originally a three referendum plan. So I'll just kind of start with where we came from, how we got where we are, and what we still have on the future for us. Um, as a team with the district and the construction manager, we've been through the process of kind of evaluating the district configuration and and a lot of that has to do with how the great alignments occurred. There was a lot of activity early on back in the early summer of um, between workshops with administrators, workshops with teachers. Um, I, was, I, was, I had the privilege of actually attending one of those and seeing, I think the district at one point had about 10 or 12 different models that they were evaluating for great alignments throughout the district. Um, they, they kind of vetted through those through a workshop all day. Um, and at the end, they evaluated each of them, the pros, the cons, what the advantages were, what the efficiencies were that would come out of each of those options. And it was able to give us a good direction in, in terms of what improvements needed to happen to the buildings based on the evaluations that the administration and the teachers had done here in the district. And that really landed us in a position of a lot of things remaining the same um, in terms of grade alignments, meaning the high school would remain a 9 through 12 building, the middle school slash intermediate school would remain two campuses, meaning a five and sixth grade at the intermediate school, a seventh and eighth grade at the middle school. And really the changes were identified at the elementary school level. And a lot of that again comes from efficiencies and looking at the best way for as, as enrollment kind of stays flat as we're seeing right now. And the best way to use our buildings, the, the determination was made that Closing Center Street as part of this project was something that the district wanted to evaluate and see what that would happen um, as that happened. So, so we did that. We began developing building plans, looked at what it would take if we were going to realign the district with this mentality of instead of four elementary schools, what would it take to go to three elementary schools um, in terms of classrooms? Because obviously we can't jeopardize any of the classroom spaces. We can't jeopardize the, the curriculum that's being taught. So that was really the development of the building plans, which you'll see here tonight. I've got some of those conceptual designs of how that would work out. During that process, we obviously had to evaluate a lot of the outstanding needs. And the, the big thing that really, and we're still actively doing this, was actually the special education needs in the, in the district. You know, as we began to look at, we, it's easy to identify when classrooms are undersized or they're 
underfitted, uh, but sometimes some of those other support services get overlooked in the process of these evaluations. So that we took a deep dive into the needs in terms of those, those special needs beyond your special education, but all of the needs outside of the classrooms. And, then, and through that process, that helped us also further define these plans and make sure that we were really meeting the curriculum and the needs of the school district through this project. We prioritize those needs. And ultimately, what you're going to see here is the, uh, the culmination of all of that effort in a very conceptual idea um, in, in terms of how it would work, not necessarily how these floor plans, that these are carved in stone, but more importantly, that we evaluated the needs within the district, evaluated the current curriculum, and made sure that all of that can be incorporated into these conceptual plans. We've worked with um, fiscal advisors, as Tom mentioned, uh, and through this through this process of identifying the best way to maximize the amount of um, aid that we get from the state. So I'll take a quick bird walk here and kind of explain that process very briefly, um, how state aid works and how a school district gets funding to be able to do these projects. So at, a, at the state level, New York State provides funding to all of the school districts um, based on certain types of scope that you're going to build, whether it's additions, whether it's renovations, whether it's classrooms, cafeteria, all the different spaces. And all of those spaces generate a different form of aid that comes to the school district. And fiscal about well, Hunt, working directly with fiscal advisors, really took a strong approach to find the best way that we could maximize building things that meet the curriculum, number one, meet the curriculum for the school district, but as importantly, we align that for being fiscally responsible and maximizing that aid that comes from New York State to help us build these projects. And that was quite the effort, kind of playing this, you know, playing this, um, this fine balance of finding where we meet the curriculum and put these pools of money in the right places so that we can maximize that aid for the school district. And we've got a slide that'll get a little deeper into that tonight as well. And then ultimately the schedule. Um, I'll tell you that uh, Mr. McGurgan with Welver, myself, and a couple of other people just this afternoon spent about another three hours talking about the schedule for this project, coming up with a preliminary plan of how we can phase this thing in and effectively um, do all this construction and still keep a school district operational. Uh, we certainly had a very challenging last three or four years here in the district, but I think it's been really successful in terms of keeping the school operational, keeping that curriculum moving, but still, as you saw tonight on a tour, still being able to accomplish some of these improvements throughout the school. And a lot of what you didn't even see tonight is some of the back end stuff that's happening as well. We didn't take you into a boiler room. You know, we've done full boiler room uh, replacements in this district. There's been a lot of efficiencies that have been, have, that have come as part of this project. So that's how we got where we are today. So to kind of run through these buildings and, and these, um, these boards are posted all over the place at this point. We've actually got boards posted just outside here in the auditorium at the high school. Uh, I believe we're even in the works of getting them posted throughout the district at all of the elementary buildings. Um, and they're posted on the website. So there's a lot of places that um, if you aren't here tonight, and you want to evaluate these closer, they're on the website, they're, they're all kinds of places. But um, I'll run through them quickly here. So what you're seeing here is Big Flats Elementary. Um, and again, remember a lot of this comes from that concept of needing to expand these buildings. You know, there was a lot of problems with space in these buildings, some of these main spaces. And when I say that, I mean the gymnasium. Currently this space here that's colored yellow is actually the gymnasium in the building. Um, and what we're proposing is the blue is an addition to the building. All of the yellow is renovation. So we'd be building a new gymnasium with those classrooms. Those classrooms are there to accommodate the, the, the closure of Center Street and the redistrict, redistricting at the elementary level. And obviously the gymnasium with a stage. So it was really important that we still give these um, elementary schools a proper performance space. Um, if anybody's been to an elementary performance, whether it's a, whether it's a, your, your son or daughter plays in the band or the orchestra or um, plays in big class basketball league in the, in, the, uh, in the elementary schools, these spaces are lacking in space. Um, yeah, I think I stood at a couple of my son's concerts at Big Flats Elementary because the spaces were full. So um, it's really important, we think, it, 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 in this project to address those current needs 
as well as address this influx of students. So ultimately we build a new gym with a new stage. We renovate the current gym into a cafeteria and kitchen and the current cafeteria becomes the new library. And you'll kind of see a trend here as I get to the next schools, but um, that's really the program here. There's also some site improvements with some playgrounds as well as a as a drive that we've got to add around the building. Um, and then obviously we will continue to do HVAC improvements and replacements, continue to find efficiencies in the operations of the building. Ridge Road, uh, you're going to find a very similar theme here between Ridge Road and Big Flats. Uh, both have very similar lack of space when it comes to those public spaces. So currently, the yellow is the size of the current cafeteria. And you'll, you can see that essentially what we're proposing is that we would expand that cafeteria to create a new larger gym, again with a stage and bleachers. We would convert again the old gymnasium into the cafeteria, and then we would expand the library here at the front side with a classroom addition off the back. To give you a point of reference, um, in this smaller blow up, that road right there is Wygant Road, and this road is Ridge Road. So right here is the corner where the playground is, and the addition would be off the back, kind of towards the, the fields there. Improvements of parking lot. Um, here at Ridge Road, we're actually proposing that, that current loop that's out front, that's the small, really small loop that's kind of kind of almost not even usable because of the shape of it. We're proposing that we would add a much larger loop there that would bring all the buses to the front side of Ridge Road. Um, so you'd have your buses stacked all here, and that would free this back parking lot up to be the parent pickup and drop off exclusively. So you wouldn't have a parking lot. Currently, a lot of problems with our districts is with our school buildings is that we we were forced into a situation where the buses and the parents are often um, in the same parking lot, and that that's what often causes a lot of this chaos. And and honestly, Center Street is one of the ones the hard that's hardest to solve that. So if you actually did a parent drop off here at Center Street, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, right now, the buses are at the front of the lot, parents are behind. So. Here at Ridge Road, as well as Big Flats and Gardner Road, we tried to create separate loops for those two activities to help with some of that congestion. And again, still mechanical improvements. We've got some playground improvements as well in front at the building at Ridge Road. Gardner Road. Gardner Road. Um, this one is uh, obviously a different vintage than Big Flats and Ridge Road, different layout. So it doesn't have kind of the same complications. So Currently, the auditorium and the gymnasium that are there uh, just really needs um, full renovations. So complete renovations, as well as at the cafeteria kitchen, we're actually talking about increasing the size of that kitchen. You know, to help with the influx of the students, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to need some improvement in the way that that kitchen kind of flows. So we're talking about doing a full renovation of that kitchen and even reconfiguration. The gymnasium essentially would stay about the same other than complete renovation. You know, new floor, new backboards, all new finishes in the space, complete renovation. And as well as the library, complete renovation inside of that space. So all of the elementaries at the end of this project, the goal is that they would have a renovated and, and properly sized gymnasium, cafeteria, and library, and a stage associated, whether it's at Gardner Road, the stage happens to be in the cafeteria because that's where it currently resides. And then the other two, it would be as part of the gymnasium. And mechanical upgrades and playgrounds again. Intermediate school. Intermediate school actually is um, a large site package. So we've got, if you can look at the blow up here again in the corner, um, this is Sing Sing Road here. Uh, this is the what we call the, this is the north, even though it's on the bottom side of the page, this is actually north. This is the larger lot where currently um, the parent drop-off happens all the way at the back, or parent pickup all happens all the way at the back of the lot. The idea here is, is you kind of get a feel for what we've done at that building already. If you've done any uh, parent drop-off or pickup, any student pickup at that building, we did some renovations. The, 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 um, the county actually did the renovations on Sing Sing Road which is what widened that, gave us turning lanes. So that helped a little bit. 
then you'll notice that we change the entrance point in that lot as well to avoid the fact that we used to have two exit lanes that often would get complicated. So we merge that into a single exit lane to try and limit that, that kind of confusion. And this really just is the culmination of all of that, that, that kind of groundwork that we made. So it's the further development of that, it's the further increasing the parent loop. And this, this, this site project really is about improving parent circulation as they pick up students and teachers in and out of the building. So that's that north lot. We've also got a full renovation of the gymnasium and locker rooms here in this building, um, which actually is a, a bit overdue. So that would be a full renovation of the gymnasium and actually reconfigurations of the locker rooms as well. So locker rooms would get a bit of a re reconfiguration. We've got some roof replacements here as well. Those are just out of warranty. So it's time at this point to replace those roofs. And then you'll notice that this has a yellow line here around this building. Um, this building would actually also be outfitted with full climate control. So we go through, we do mechanical improvements, and then ultimately we'd add the equipment necessary to help with heating and cooling and other all, all climate control in this building. We've also got playground improvements and, and other um, maintenance items throughout the building. And here at the high school, right now, as we've talked about, I kind of talked about on the tour, uh, the large project here at the high school is, is the gymnasium at the South Wing. Um, so to kind of give you an idea of that location, um, where my cursor is right now, that's the, uh, that's the corner where the glass is that overlooks the stadium, the stadium right there. So as we walk down through here, we talk about that wood shop remaining. That's that classroom right there. So that wood shop will remain. But as I mentioned, all those classrooms on the other side of the hallway, those would get renovated now in this project. Then we've got the new gymnasium conceptually laid out, um, three basketball courts, essentially to give you kind of a concept of the size. The idea is there that you could easily run two physical education classes concurrently within that gymnasium, um, just within the gymnasium program. Then if you get to the second floor, we're talking about adding a new weight room here at this location, as well as a multi-purpose space, whether it's for cheerleading practice or it's yoga classes for physical education or it's some other level of curriculum. The idea is that the space is tall and allows flexibility in PE, um, but can also be used as extra extracurricular. And then ultimately we're looking at a running track on the second floor that surrounds that gymnasium. So right now we, um, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of our track runs the hallways in the building. Um, when the weather is in climate, they're running around the hallways after hours, which obviously is, if you're a teacher working late in the building or an administrator, um, it can be a little scary as you hear the feet coming towards you in the hallway. Um, so the idea is that we can give that location, again, for physical education as well as for those extracurriculars and get them out of the hallways and into an actual physical education space. There's more roof replacements that need to happen as part of this. Um, and then also site improvement. And um, we kind of mentioned this on the tour here as well. This is the this is the east lot. This is the bus parking lot right now. So the idea again is a full improvement here with traffic flow, um, potentially canopies out there to help with coverage. Um, but really addressing, we've addressed the west side of the school in terms of parking, as you notice. Um, there, that parking lot has been improved, but now we need to bring this one up for those about that bus loop. As well. And you can see there kind of a conceptual image of what we're, what a possibility of the gymnasium, just to give you kind of a scale of what we're talking about and, um, and, and space, you know, lots of natural light within the space um, and, and welcoming and inviting to guests that come to after, after school events, but also very accommodating this place. To the stadium, um, the, the A, we'll start with the image here, the, the gymnasium that we're talking about. You can just kind of see there in the blue on the bottom of that plan. Um, this is our parking lot as it currently sits. Right here is our, what I call our stadium entry building. This is the entry point into the stadium. Right now we're talking about adding a small building to the west of that existing building. 
This would be the visitor's locker room. That's actually, you can see here in this plan, this is the existing portion that's not colored. And the colored portion here at the end would be the visitor's locker room. And then here towards the east, the home locker room, as well as some uh, multi-purpose slash marching band storage, as well as um, officials rooms. So the idea here for a full site concept is that as a visiting team came in for, a, for an event, they could bring their buses in along the back, right along the railroad tracks. They'd be able to park their visiting buses here along the sidewalk. Students would be able to empty right into the visitor locker room out onto the field. And the idea there is that as the visitors running on, they're able to, the visiting team is opposite that and they can see their students running onto the field and vice versa with the home team. We would have a home here. Our students could even queue in the new gymnasium and make a, then all of this right here is walks. So the idea the students could come down here, they could be in the locker room and then vice versa. They would enter the field here with the home bleachers being opposite those that enter. You can kind of, what, what we're looking for here is kind of an area, we, we've got an interesting site here in terms of elevations. And we've also got a situation where when a game gets done, whether it's a whatever activity, when an activity gets done on the field, um, right now the parents don't really have anywhere to go to wait for their student athletes to complete. And often they'll actually even gather here right at the exit to prevent you know, the other spectators from exiting. So the idea here is that we can also provide kind of an area here for the parents to wait for their athletes as they get done and they come out of those locker rooms. So we, we would propose, you know, even terracing this, possibly providing benches. You can kind of get an idea of that from this rendering below. Just this space, this outdoor space where the parents can wait for their students rather than waiting right inside the stadium. So the cost. So right now we're looking at um, what we've laid out here is kind of by building. This is a fully this is a fully loaded cost, and what I mean by that is there are more costs to a project than just the actual construction of that project, um, whether it's getting the the services from sampling materials to identify um, positive materials for hazardous materials, or it's the air monitoring of that, or it's the special inspections, or it's the cost of the architect or it's the cost of the construction manager. There's lots of other costs that come with a project. So what we've given here is an overall project cost. So not to be confused, these aren't the prices that it would cost to build those buildings. This is that price that includes the, the cost of the whole project. I've also given here kind of dates of when we can receive building permits. I talked a little bit about aid and how aid operates. There is also a, a running five-year clock that happens with all of these building permits. So every time you get a building permit, you have to wait five years, and then you're eligible to go and get that aid becomes eligible to go and get again through a building permit process. So right now, these are our targets for our building permits. I don't know if it's hard to read there, but we're we're right now for the elementary schools, we're early 2023 that we can get our building permit. So right now that we would have activity to happen up till that point. Then we try and get our building permit and we would start construction after that date. So that's our three elementary schools is that March 1st. Intermediate school is actually sooner. That could actually, we could actually start that construction as, as quickly as we prepare the documents. Um, the high school is a little bit further out. So high school will actually, we can actually get a building permit until 2024. So as part of this, the, the priority is you can begin to kind of see here is the elementary schools really become the priority first in the project um, so that we can begin that and then ultimately move into the high school at, in 2024. The stadium locker rooms actually don't have a date where we have to wait for. You can actually go get that building permit as soon as we move the project. So that, that one could actually start um, much sooner than the others. And then I think the next slide is um, to kind of dig a little deeper into how I kind of alluded to this, this aid um, information. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Crystal. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm Christine Crowley with Crystal Advisors. 
and I do the financing plan for the capital project. So um, we work along with Hunt, um, as I mentioned earlier, to look at aidability of a project. So we know that there's the expense of the project. We want to make sure that we're bringing in as much aid from the state to offset that expense so that we, the taxpayers, are as effective as little as possible. So uh, when we look at um, the uh, aid side of it, we want to make sure that we, as I mentioned, we have as much of a scope fit into those pools of available money that the state will aid as possible. Um, so let's look at this slide. I'll read the numbers off because it does look a little blurry. Um, so proposition amount is $122,254,993. Um, the building aid ratio is 82.1%. So what that means is 82.1 cents on every dollar of aidable scope is reimbursed by the state. Now they do that over a 15 year term. So they don't do that all in the next year. So that's why we do the borrowing and we do the borrowings with that. The district has a capital reserve of $10 million balance within it. So that is a reserve specifically set up for capital projects. And the voters have to authorize the use of that reserve. So that reserve would be part of the proposition and be used towards this project. We also have existing district resources of 15 million. So right now, the district has a million dollars each year within their budget that they do capital projects with. And so they fund a million of capital, um, million dollars in capital projects each year. Taking on these large projects, that need for those million dollar smaller projects goes away. So instead of allocating it to the smaller projects, they're going to take that and allocate it to the larger ones. Um, and just to mention, it is 15 million because we are advertising or we're borrowing over that 15 million. So what does all that mean to you guys? So the maximum tax impact, um, which is a tax levy increase, is about two million five seven four one zero five. So per one thousand full value, that's a dollar nine. Um, if you have a hundred thousand dollar full value home, it will be five hundred nine dollars and ninety cents a year. Now, keep in mind when we say mark, uh, full value, that's your market value home or market value of your home, and so. We use hundred thousand, knowing not everybody lives in a hundred thousand dollar home. But if you're in a fifty thousand dollar home, you divide by two. Hundred thousand dollar home is a little bit higher by two. Um, so if you are a homeowner with Basic Star, it would be seventy six dollars and ninety three cents. And if you had an Enhanced Star, it would be thirty nine two dollars and twenty cents a year. Now we like to break it down to make it understandable for everyone and kind of see really what that means. So monthly, it's about at nine dollars and sixteen cents. Weekly, two dollars and eleven cents, and daily about thirty cents. So again, you can use those amounts and use them in multipliers to determine for you with a homeowner what that would be. Um, keep in mind too, it's market value, not assessed value. So if you look at your tax bill, you'll see assessed value and market value. So market value is what you want to use. So. You can use. so. Any, any questions on the finances? I'd be certainly happy to answer them. That's it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a couple of things that we've had as, as some natural questions. One of those is, I see that you're doing gymnasiums, cafeterias, and libraries at the elementary school. Why when we have one that's already going well in our school? And one of the things is when you talk about that building aid ability, what happens is we also have to play the financial game with state aid. And the reason is, is if I just try to renovate a cafeteria or renovate a gym right in its current position, state aid doesn't necessarily give you a lot of aid. But if you reallocate, like in some of our situations where the gymnasium is going to be fully rebuilt here, even if it's a new addition or a renovation, and they understand that you need that to operate, there's where the aid increase comes in. So what happens is our architect and our fiscal advisors try to make sure that we try to maximize the money that can come in for the project. So that's one of those questions. 
The question is, is why are we adding on to these elementaries? Well, as you know, back in 2012 to 15, they did a consolidation study. They also did a merger study, which that was in the first three months of me being here. The community overwhelmingly at 83% said, we don't wanna merge with anybody, but we also, uh, the board accepted the results of the consolidation study that said our most aging building, which is Center Street, is most likely in every plan, one that would have to be addressed or shuttered. We don't wanna shutter it because one is, we're never going to sell that property. It's part of, of course, it's high school sort of in, in compass. But what happens is to replace and refurbish that building, we would have to do two types of major remediation to it, asbestos and because it's the oldest building, less. So you'd have to do one remediation and then once it's clear, then you got to do the other remediation. And yes, we could renovate it, but the cost in a five-year period, we would not be able to renovate without having an exorbitant amount of cost on the local share. So where we might get so much in state aid for that building, it might be two or three times that to put it all back together in that same time period. And the state requires that anything above that aid ability, the local tax base must take care of. Our whole project, the board has asked us is to try to make sure we do as much fiscally smart, prudent planning to overhaul the entire district. Uh, and that's why we would do that. Now, each of the additions at the elementary is so that we can also look at using and maximizing aid because the state will only give us aid if we have have a reason to add on to those buildings. One of the significant reasons is if you are shuttering a building for other use or selling it, which we're not selling it, but we would shutter it for other use. Now, all of the aid ability on Center Street can be transferred to each one of our elementary schools and allow us to get more aid and then really right size the buildings. Currently, most of our classrooms are around 600, 650 square feet. Recommendations, and especially something that COVID has pointed out is that we needed larger classrooms. That's one of the reasons why we couldn't separate kids. And even with the larger classrooms, it's difficult when you're a larger school. But what happens is all of our classrooms at the end of all three projects will be roughly around 900 to 1,000 square feet. Special ed classes may be a little bit higher than that. Uh, but that will give ample room for the 21st Century Learning Plus for the avenues within the programs that are there. That's what will happen when you saw some of the gray areas on the elementary. What happens is it's not that we're not touching them. It's just, we don't have the money to touch them in this project unless we ask the whole community to do it at the same time where we do part of it. And then we go back to the state with what we said was the third project the aid recycles. And then we would do that again, but all of that has to go through the process. Let's see, so we've got the aid, that. Uh, the question on the taxes. As everybody asks, well, that's the rate. That's what I'm gonna pay. The hard part about any type of capital project, just like our budget, is we can never tell you the official final tax position. We can just tell you over the past 20 years, whatever we put up, the rate ends up at the end of the year being lower than what we put up. And the main reason is the value of the district has been growing substantially. So the numbers, if you go back to that, the numbers, not that one, that one. These numbers that you see, the 1.099 is on the tax on rate. That's what we have calculated as the most conservative highest maximum effort that would be needed. It doesn't mean that that's gonna be the number. In our first project, that number was 0.39 cents. Currently, as of today with this first project, the tax rate has actually gone down. The first project has not cost the local taxpayer a cent because the aid has come in and the value of the district has gone up our tax on true rate came down. So we were at $18.04. We are now at $17.38. That's good because what happens is the bigger investment that we make in our community, just like having two car dealerships built, that will raise the price of 
the uh, entire Horseheads district, which will share the tax load and lower the tax rate. We are the second lowest in the entire Southern Tier County of GST Bozo. Number one is Watkins Glen. They're at 1678, we are at 1738. I'm hoping one more budget year, because we see our trend is continuing, that our value is going up. Like I said, we just built two car dealerships. They came onto the tax rolls after March 31st. So they're on next year's aid ability for the district. That means that our district probably increased in value, which will drive down and suppress rate. The more people improve their homes, the more businesses that come here, the more businesses renovate and add to the value of the district, the more the tax base gets shared at a lower rate among everybody else. Is that pretty much the... That's the financial planning our business office, our district, our board of education has been trying to do, and that's what we're bringing here. So these numbers are the maximum you'll see. We are hopeful that our, our sort of prognostication down the road when we build this project out, that our numbers will be similar to what they are for this first project, almost negligible to nothing. But we are obligated to give you the maximum impact that we know of as right now. One of the big reasons we do this is because in the first project, we have to always anticipate interest rates. Interest rates for the first project by fiscal advisors were estimated at 4%. In our project, they ended up being less than 2% when we actually bonded out because people love to give horse heads money because they know that it's a pretty good bet. We have a high Moody's rating. Uh, so people know it's a safe project. They aren't gambling by investing in horse heads with a bond. So what happens is in these numbers, they didn't go as high as 4% but they went to 3% and still our bonding should be very much lower. And that also will bring down that price. So that's what we mean when we say conservatively estimated because we know the impact of interest. We just can't calculate the impact of how much the district's value will go over the next five to seven years. We can just shoot for it. So those are some of the things that are important. So at this time, We've given you some of the basic facts, other information out there. If there's any questions, we will entertain them from anyone that would like to. Yes. Simple question. Have they not considered to sell a model that carries schools into a new school? Yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, if we can, one of the questions was, have we not considered consolidating, and I'm doing this for the video too, uh, all the elementaries into one sort of like super elementary school? We have considered that even before I came. One of the problems is you have to have the land. The district does not have the land to do that. We would actually have to use the land that we have or go out and claim land. And when you don't own land, it's the highest price piece of land that you would have to pay. If we did it on the land that we have, say we did have a site, remember we would have to take that whole school down. And then what do we do with the students? So that's, it's a balancing act. The other part is by doing so, the state may not be able to aid it functionally within that five-year period. So it would be something that if the community risked and said, yeah, that's what we want, the community would also be saying that we will take whatever the cost is above the state's allowable amount, we'll cover. That's a financial handicap potentially for most districts. It's just like at one time we had proposed maybe not renovating the high school, but build the new high school. And then once it was built, because you would think in, in, in general terms, it's better to start from scratch and just build from the ground up and get it done and then take down the other. The aid ability on that, if we built new, we only get about 40% aid. So we could build a new $150 million building, but we would have to come up with 60% of that cost from the local where if you renovate, we only have to come up with maybe about 10 to 18%. So that's, that's that financial piece you have to do. Okay, other questions? The biggest thing the board has really challenged us to try to do the best to move us forward and the plan that in the future, each of these three projects, if they are successful and are approved for the next, 
30 to 50 years, the recycling of money every five years will help to keep it off the local tax base and allow the, the district to regularly be updating itself every five years after we do these first, first three projects. Because this first project will be done 15 years later when the, the money for this project is all paid off, the district should do another project to take that aid ability money and make sure they reinvest it to keep the district up to date. That is something the district wasn't doing over the past 20, 30 years. They were doing small, some small projects, but there wasn't a regular cycle of recycling the money so they can make the most out of the Albany tax money versus the local. And it's all your tax money, and that's the hard thing. And I think people finally realize that we're paying money in whether we buy at the grocery store, our uh, income tax, our local taxes, our local county taxes, just what we pay at the gas pump and so forth. All that money goes to the state. And no matter what, every year, the state is going to give that money back to local communities for whatever projects they get approved. In Horsehead, before I came, that money was going to Corning, that money was going to Elmira, it's going to every other school district, but was not coming to Horsehead, and it's your money. Now you're bringing your money back if you approve this project, like in the first one, and you're bringing other people that are not doing the building projects money back to Horsehead's too. And it, it's sort of a cycle. You've got to make sure that you look after your own as well as you're updating the others, but always look after your own. Other questions? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for coming out. We hope you enjoyed the tours. Please look at our website. There will be another tour video up. If there's any questions, we try to get back to anybody or any group that wants us to come out, please contact my office at 795-5601, and we will arrange that. We will have a public hearing here on the evening of November 30th, 6 p.m., for the Board of Education to finalize and, and just hear any comments, concerns, or questions from the community as we would regularly do in any budget vote. Yes? Oh, it's going to be in the Multimedia Center? I'm sorry, in the Multimedia Center for that night. We're combating space right now for everybody, so please help, help us just pay attention to that. And then on December 7th will be the call for the referendum. Uh, 7 a.m. in the morning till 9 p.m. at night in the South Gym, just like we do for our regular annual meeting. So ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing everybody on the 7th. Thank you. Now drive careful with all those deer on the way back to this area. <laughs> yeah, the deer are running right now, that's for sure. We are all set. So thank you all. Okay, thank you. Tomorrow, right?